Welcome to the Biotech Whisperer channel. Our topic today is on an introduction to tissue engineering. If you are new here, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos. Let's continue with our topic. Tissue engineering is an interdisciplinary field involving life sciences, medicine, materials science, and engineering. It was defined as the application of principles and methods of engineering and life sciences towards biological engineering applications to restore, maintain, or enhance functionality. It builds upon the fundamental understanding of structure-function relationships in normal and pathological mammalian tissues and the development of biological substitutes. To develop biological substitutes that aid in remodeling, a tissue engineer must first understand the relationship between the structure and the function of cells, tissues, and organs. The knowledge set of a tissue engineer is a combination of that of a biologist, material scientist, engineer, and surgeon, either as a multidisciplinary scientist or work as a team. For instance, a tissue engineer would have biological knowledge or familiarity with the key molecular, chemical, biological, and cellular events that lead to tissue and organ formation. Consequently, a good comprehension of the material properties of tissues and design tissue substitutes to match material properties of the native tissues would be essential. Tapping upon the engineering skills, a tissue engineer need to conceptualize the design of a bioreactor to support the growth of the tissue in vitro and develop predictive models that describe tissue properties as a function of growth time. Finally, understanding the tissue properties through the suitability for scaffolding is important in order to guide the differentiation and assembly of cells into functional three-dimensional tissues. This builds upon knowledge how molecules perform in terms of their bioactivity when embedded within engineered tissues to assist in accelerated healing processes upon surgical implantation. In a classical tissue engineering approach, living cells and biomolecules are incorporated into a scaffold, which is then placed into a bioreactor. Cultivation within the bioreactor, in vitro, allows engineered tissues to reach some degree of function before they are implanted. In the ideal case, cells grow and start to make tissue within the scaffold. The scaffold is expected to support further cell function, proliferation, or differentiation, and allows blood vessels to infiltrate, while the scaffold itself biodegrades once this engineered construct is implanted into the body. This is where the cells differentiate into the desired tissue, and the tissue starts performing its proper function. Tissue engineering requires the following to work upon. It requires a cell source expandable in number, followed by a scaffold that is suitable for the engineering of the specific type of tissue, and scalable bioreactors that mimic the body environment for the production process. There are three main approaches to tissue engineering. The first is to implant freshly isolated or cultured cells to treat diseased or injured tissues. Cells can be manipulated to suit a patient's needs before implantation. The benefit of doing so is that cell implantation eliminates complications and morbidity associated with surgical procedures though concerns exist if the cells being washed out from the site of injection or issues regarding the inability of the implanted cells to maintain proper function. The second strategy is to stimulate in situ tissue regeneration by implanting scaffolds or injecting tissue-inducing substance at the injured tissue. This method requires purification of the tissue-inducing molecules, as well as selection of appropriate delivery methods, i.e., controlled delivery, soluble factors. The third is to implant functional tissues engineered from cells and scaffolds in vitro. This requires optimization of cell ratio and density, as well as mechanical and biochemical properties of scaffolds. All the approaches discussed above can lead to immunoreaction, depending on the cell source and the type of biomaterial used. Implantation of cell-laden scaffolds is a promising strategy for regenerating tissue that has been damaged due to injury or disease. However, the act of implantation initiates an acute inflammatory response. If the scaffold is non-biologic, inflammation will be prolonged through the foreign body response 
which eventually forms a fibrous capsule and walls off the implant from the surrounding host tissue. This host response, from a cellular perspective, can create a harsh environment leading to long-lasting effects on the tissue engineering outcome. At the same time, cells embedded within the scaffold can respond to this environment and influence the interrogating immune cells such as macrophages. Understanding this complex interplay between the immune cells, notably macrophages, and the tissue engineering cells is a critically important component to a successful in vivo tissue engineering therapy. Since then, tissue engineering has rapidly grown into a vast research field that has studies ranging from creating skin substitutes to engineering functional heart tissues. Engineering of skin, nerves, bone, bone marrow, cartilage, blood vessels, corneal epithelia, arteries, heart valves, and heart myocardium are among the many current research areas in tissue engineering. The past decade have revealed advances in our understanding and generation of suitable bioengineered tissues, including vascular prostheses, infection caused by biomaterials, skin and connective tissues, and functional tissue transplants. Much progress have been made from initial two-dimensional tissue layers towards more complex tissue structures, such as the blood vessels, or myocardium, are more difficult to engineer and incorporate into native tissues, as they consist of multiple cell types, and have a complex three-dimensional structure, and a high cell density being embedded in the bioengineered tissues. One of the key challenges in tissue engineering remains to be the ability to grow thick tissues without an intrinsic capillary network. Due to the lack of nutrients, oxygen, and waste removal, this absence of an intrinsic capillary network to provide blood supply limits the thickness of engineered tissues to about 100 to 200 millimeters. On the bigger picture, the goal of tissue engineering is to create and replace portions of, or complete, organs and tissues such as bone heart and kidney for instance. Tissue engineering has the potential to ease development of new drugs by providing models based on human cells for drug development, which may eventually eliminate the need for organ transplants and broadly improve human health on a global basis.